This video will demonstrate the calibration procedure for the LabVault 5250 robot. As a prerequisite, it is assumed that you know how to connect the equipment and use the teach pendant. To avoid injury, never bring your hand, other body parts, or anything attached to your body into the shoulder mechanism area while the robot is moving. If necessary, power down the controller and remove the robot from the linear slide. On the robot, loosen the screws of the shoulder cover and remove the cover. Turn on the robot controller and perform a hard home positioning. To perform a hard home, follow these steps. From the main menu, select Motion Control. In the Motion Control menu, select Hard Home and then press Enter to confirm, which will cause the robot to perform a hard home. Next, you will move the robot to its calibration position. From the Motion Control menu, select Calibration. In the Calibration menu, select Robot. In the Calibrate menu, select Move to Calibration Position. Press Enter to move the robot to the calibration position. The gripper should appear fully open. On the Teach Pendant, press the Teach Menu key then press the A key to select Articular Moves and access the Teach menu for Articular Moves. Move the robot forearm parallel to the work surface by using Elbow Pitch Up, and then close the gripper jaws to tighten the calibration pin into the gripper jaws. Using the supplied combination square, check to see if the two gripper jaws are perpendicular with their mounting brackets. If the gripper jaws are non-perpendicular, they will be misaligned with the central axis of the gripper body. Non-perpendicularity causes misalignment of the central axis of the gripper body. If the jaws are not perpendicular, perform the following steps. Loosen the four screws holding the jaws on their mounting brackets, that is, the two screws of each side of the gripper. Place the combination square onto the jaws and move the jaws with the calibration pin until they are perpendicular. Then, tighten the four screws. It is not important that the square bubble be perfectly level, as the goal of this step is to obtain a null clearance between the jaws and not to place the gripper level with the table. Next, perform calibration of the roll articulation. Before doing so, it is recommended that you reduce the speed of motion below 10 and maintain this speed throughout this entire procedure. From the Teach menu, select Speed Control. Press 1 to reduce the speed to 10 and press Enter to save the speed change. Perform the roll articulation calibration using the following steps. Position the combination square onto the rear bracket of the gripper assembly. Then, move the roll articulation until the square bubble is level. Note, if in a later step the roll articulation is moved inadvertently, you will have to repeat the calibration procedure beginning at the start of this step. Perform the base articulation calibration using the following steps. Adjust the position of the robot until the tip of the calibration pin nearly touches the work surface near a row of perforations. For best results, extend the robot arm as far as possible. Move the base articulation until the tip of the calibration pin points midway between the two perforations where an imaginary line extending from the center of the front of the robot base passes. Let's call this point A. There is a gap of 50 millimeters between the two perforations. Use the graduations on the carpenter square ruler to find the midpoint. Gently move the calibration pin manually back and forth around point A to verify that the gaps on both sides of this point are equal. This gap is due to the backlash of the gearbox of the control motor. Use the graduations on the carpenter square to verify this. Fine-tune the rotation of the robot base if necessary until both gaps are equal. If, in a later step, the base articulation is moved inadvertently, you will have to repeat the calibration procedure beginning at the start of this step. Do not move the roll articulation. Fully open the gripper, remove the calibration pin, and adjust the robot arm in a position similar to that shown.
perform the shoulder articulation calibration using the following steps. Using the carpenter square, measure the height of the axis of rotation of the robot's shoulder. Then, move the shoulder until the height of the axis of rotation of the elbow is equal to the height of the axis of rotation of the shoulder. The robot forearm should now be horizontal to the work surface. If in a later step, the shoulder articulation is moved inadvertently, you will have to repeat the calibration procedure beginning at the start of this step. Also, do not move the roll or base. Perform the elbow articulation calibration using the following steps. The robot forearm must be perpendicular with the work surface. Position the carpenter square against the forearm with the right edge of its short leg passing through the center of axis of rotation of the elbow, and the long leg bottom aligned with the perforations of the work surface. Position the combination square against the carpenter square so that the end of its blade is near the lowest forearm screw. Then, move the elbow until the left edge of the blade is aligned with the center of this screw. If, in a later step, the elbow articulation is moved inadvertently, you will have to repeat the calibration procedure beginning at the start of this step. Also, do not move the roll, base, or shoulder. Perform the wrist pitch articulation calibration so that the gripper is perpendicular with the work surface. Position the right edge of the blade of the combination square against the front side of the gripper and move the wrist pitch articulation until there is no clearance between the right edge of the blade and the gripper. If, in a later step, the wrist pitch articulation is moved inadvertently, you will have to repeat the calibration procedure beginning at the start of this step. Also, do not move the roll, base, shoulder, or elbow. In the main menu of the Teach Pendant, select Motion Control. From the Motion Control menu, select Calibration. In the Calibration menu, select Robot, then Save Calibration Position. This will cause the robot to perform the necessary motions to account for the newly made calibration, which will then be saved to the controller. The robot is now calibrated. Replace the shoulder cover and tighten its screws in reverse order. The next step will be to calibrate the rotary carousel. To begin, Make sure that the controller is configured for use with the carousel. On some controllers, channels 1 and 2 will be channels 7 and 8, respectively. Place the calibration of the carousel to the default setting by performing the following steps. From the main menu, select Motion Control. From the Motion Control menu, select Calibration. In the Calibration menu, access the Carousel Calibrate menu by selecting the channel through which the carousel is connected to the controller. In the Calibrate menu, select Default, then press Enter to confirm, which will cause the controller to place the carousel in its default calibration setting. Perform a hard home positioning. Access the menu that permits control of articular motion. Reduce the speed of motion below 10. On the carousel platter, locate the first stamped square that will pass in front of the carousel limit switch when the platter is rotated clockwise. Rotate the carousel platter clockwise and stop moving as soon as the outer tip of the first stamped square becomes aligned with the center of the carousel limit switch. In the main menu of the Teach Pendant, select Motion Control. From the Motion Control menu, select Calibration. In the Calibration menu, select the appropriate channel to which the carousel is connected. Then, Save Calibration Position. This will cause the carousel to rotate to account for the newly made calibration, which will then be saved into the controller. Finally, the linear slide must be calibrated. Reduce the speed of motion below 10 and mount your robot to the linear slide. Perform a hard home positioning 
and access the menu that permits control of articular motion. Place the carpenter square on the work surface so that the right edge of its long leg is eight pins of perforations away from the location pins. Move the mobile metallic base of the linear slide until its right leg is aligned with the right edge of the long leg of the square. Verify proper alignment of the metallic base with the right edge of the square using the combination square. In the main menu of the Teach Pendant, select Motion Control. From the Motion Control menu, select Calibration. In the Calibration menu, select the appropriate channel to which the linear slide is connected, then Save Calibration Position. This will cause the linear slide to move to account for the newly made calibration, which will then be saved into the controller. The linear slide moves to its home position, which in this case is not the same as the calibration position. Your calibration is now complete.